Hello, I'm back, and this time I have LEGO Transformers Direx. Now, this is a belated video. This was meant to, I believe, come out in September. However, I couldn't make the BrickLink orders to build him in that time, so it's coming out now. Now, if you are familiar with the uh, LEGO Creator 1 that is, you might recognize this character. That's because this is part of the September Allspark assembly, which was, of course, to build one of uh, one that is his classic characters in your own style. And I picked Direx because he was always one of my favorites, and uh, also because he's rather large and that seemed kind of fun. So yes, now as you can see, he isn't a uh, very descript vehicle. Uh, I believe one that is himself described it as kind of just him sitting down and reaching for his toes, but I still think it looks fairly cool with its gigantic cannons here, smaller guns here. His sword does store there uh, instead of storing behind the blast shields like on the original. Uh, if you open this up, you can take that out. You don't like how it looks. So yeah, if you don't want the sword, you don't have to have it in there, and this is how it looks without the sword. Just means that this is all completely open and there's no sword sticking out there. Now, uh, as far as like uh, specific details, he does have all eight wheels. Has this little bumper back here. His head is kind of exposed back here, but there just wasn't really a good way to have it fold in. Uh, this, I believe, was based off of a uh, drawing he showed off of the character. Interestingly enough, uh, they actually weren't... His feet were uh, not like this on the original model. And I didn't realize that because I was looking at the picture he had drawn. And So yeah, th it might be a little bit inaccurate, but that's just what I went for. Now, if you open this up... You can see how the bed looks. It has, it has these little intakes, which I like. And yeah. Now, as you can see, it's sort of falling apart a bit, because if you know how this guy transforms, you know those blast shields have to come off. But before that, before I keep breaking them, because of course it's Lego, so it can break, but... I just want to show this, which I suppose is kind of a like a cockpit or a cab. Obviously, this is a very Cybertronian vehicle. Maybe it's just futuristic, a futuristic Earth vehicle. I don't know. I just added a uh, cockpit for the same reason most alien Transformers designs have them, because it's a focal point and you kind of need it to make the vehicle look like it makes any kind of sense. So, yeah, even though it technically doesn't make sense, because this isn't really something a human's going to be driving in now, is it? So, yeah. I suppose it's time to transform him. Okay, to begin the transformation, if you still have the sword in him, you have to take that out. But then you have to remove these, and that's taken straight from the original creation, and then instead of folding in on themselves, you have to just pick them together. And obviously on the original version... I believe the sword was part of it that kind of came out. Obviously, mine, it just has to peg into there because I didn't, I couldn't figure out any kind of way to hide the swords in here at this scale. So, yeah. Now then, you just have to start by swinging out the cannons like that. And then coming to the back here and just taking this bumper and unclipping it from these wheels and sometimes it's easier said than done because these pieces can break off but once you've done that you can swing it back bring out his head do that and then bring this whole section just up and sometimes it can break just because it's only attached by two studs in a couple of sections but once you have that up you can come back to the wheels, and they 
simply enough will just fold right up into his torso, which I really like, which once again is taken from the original creation. Not the tech, not the uh, way it's built, but obviously the design. And now you can do the legs, which are have a couple, which have like a one neat trick I do rather enjoy. And first of all, obviously you want to actually separate them, and they swing back. If these leg, these feet can come off because they're only attached by two studs. And it's a rather awkward connection, but they usually don't come off. I just squeeze too hard on them. But yeah, then you just want to swing this back, bring it down, and then if you bring it around, you can see this piece will actually fold forward and overlap over that little intake piece. And then that can rotate. You bring out the foot. And then obviously you have to do the same exact thing on this leg, which I'll just quickly do. And then you can stand him up, though it might be a bit awkward because he is a bit heavy for the ball joints and the joints I've used. He can stand, it's just can be a bit tricky sometimes. So yes. Uh, then you have to come here and this will fold down. And let me raise the camera just so you can see him. Okay. Now you want to just bring the arms down. And this can be a bit finicky because you just have to basically hinge them out on their little double hinged elbowed elbows. which can be a bit fragile because they're attached just to these brackets here. So yes. And now you're starting to see what I'm talking about with these joints being a little bit loose for him. Once he's transformed, he doesn't usually have very many issues unless you're trying to put him into like a fancy pose. It's just obviously trying to transform him can be a bit tricky. And then these bits just fold down. You want to rotate the arm just to get the thumb out and you spread out his fingers there you go and now let's just bring this one in closer just so you can more clearly see that <laughs> of course I broke it but yeah this folds down this rotates around because that thumb was inside the forearm this is very prone to popping off if you push too hard on it which you have to do because you have to slide the fist down but as long as you're gentle with it which usually I'm not because I'm dumb it won't come off but there you go they have a hand and then you have to bring this little bumper piece uh, all the way down and then you can do the final bit of transformation which is just sort of swinging this all forward and it's kind of tricky just because it's on like a multitude of hinges in there to get everything lined up and can break off very easy but then this will just come down and peg into place and then there you have Direx so now you have Direx in his robot mode and I think he looks rather cool like this he uh, has most of the colors from his original creation or one that is his original creation just a little bit cleaned up and more properly turned into a consistent color scheme uh, which I really like and uh, in terms of scale he doesn't actually scale with my other stuff uh, my other stuff that I've shown personally I, th I like to imagine that he exists in the same scale as the other creations for this Allspark assembly like um, KWs or rollouts, which I will link in the description with the uh, whole list of other participants. And yeah, so I don't actually have anything in that scale built at the moment, uh, though I do have stuff designed in that scale, which who knows when I'll have that built and be able to show with this guy. 
But, yeah, he is rather large for that scale, obviously. Which kind of makes one of his problems less severe, because his head, the way it's attached, is perpetually looking down. Uh, like, a, he's always going to be looking down a little bit, which would kind of suck, but at least I can justify it as he's so tall he'd never actually have to look straight forward if he's trying to hurt people. So, yeah, now... As far as a uh, character on this guy, the original creation was described as neither Autobot nor Decepticon and just generally being a bit of a powerhouse. And personally, I like to imagine him as sort of a paladin of Primus, kind of just regardless of faction, hunting down anyone he sees, sees as like betraying the laws of Primus and kind of just killing them and becoming a bit of like a legend. Sort of um, not quite Prime status, but somewhere close to that. Basically, if you are uh, aware of the DJD from the IDW comics, kind of like Tarn, except the reverse of that, except with no allegiance to the Autobots. If there's an Autobot that has gotten his hands dirty, he's just as likely to be killed by this guy as any other character. Okay, so that's stuff out of the way. Let's actually talk about uh, posability. So yes, uh, this might be a bit tricky, but his arms are on ball joints which are a bit limited just because of his design. But yeah, they're on ball joints and you can bring them forward and all that. Then his arms are on double joints. So you can get a decent range out of them. He has a, ri a wrist swivel and can bring his wrists like that. Uh, as I mentioned before, his head perpetually looks down, but it can look down further and rotate. Uh... He has a waist swivel. It's a single pin, so it can be a bit loose for how chunky he is, but yeah. Then he's got T-joints in the legs. His The clips I have that I got off BrickLink are a bit loose. I think they're older pieces, and sometimes when you try and rotate them or get too risky, you pop it right off. But it's better than it exploding into a million pieces, you know? So yeah, he has a ball joint at the knee, which can allow for, like, kind of thigh swiveling and a ball joint at the ankle, which can be a bit delicate, but as long as you're not being too rough, it usually stays on. So yeah, and because of these uh, all the ball joints in his legs, and how much uh, motion there is in there, and how many like different ways you can pose him, he can be a bit tricky, just because sometimes his legs will give out because of just how much heft he has in his upper body. But anyways, let's get into his accessories. Now, he has two, obviously. He has the blast shield, which is formed from the two blast shields of the vehicle mode. And his sword, which has to fold up like this in vehicle mode. But, yes. Now, this actually kind of reminds me of, I believe it was the vector shield from Age of Extinction and The Last Knight. I think it was in The Last Knight. I don't even remember. I don't know if he used it. But, yeah. Uh, now, how do you get them to hold these? Uh, well... First of all, before I get into that, I just want to um, put a disclaimer. He, the ball joints in his arms, his shoulders, have been sharpied. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it just means if you just take a regular sharpie, I use a black sharpie, and just draw onto a ball joint, it increases the fit friction so that it is more stable and can support greater weights. Uh, I'm oh, That's one of the very few parts mods that I'm willing to make. If you don't like that, uh, he can function without them. It's just you can't really pose him with his weapons because uh, they're just a little too heavy for the mixel joints. So you can get him into certain poses and you can give him the weapons, but you're not exactly going to be get him, getting him like swinging the sword or aiming the sh gun shield. So I chose to sharpie the, the uh, arms, and I'm sure some people will not like that one bit. But that's just what I did. So, yes, uh, the shield simply enough just attaches right onto his forearm, and sometimes if you push too hard, that hand can just pop right off. And there you go. Now, the sword is a little bit more interesting, because obviously these uh, hands, which I should probably credit Boys With Most Toys for, uh, obviously they can't really grip onto things stably. So that's where this comes in. This actually pegs up into the bottom of the inside of his forearm. 
So basically what you have to do is you just open up his whole hand here, bring it forward, and just have to get this into place and use your finger to pick it up into there and then you can close the fingers around just to keep it properly positioned and there you go. Now you have him holding his sword and shield. His foot just popped off. So that's about it for this guy. I am rather happy with how he turned out. And in general, I have a lot of nostalgia for most of one that is his creation. So it's very nice to be able to have one of my favorites in front of me, even if it is my own version. And yeah, in general, I would say that if you haven't seen any of uh, the one that is his videos, that you should go check them out. They're um, kind of a piece of LEGO Transformers history, and have been a major inspiration to me and many others. So if you haven't seen them, I would say go watch them. And if you haven't seen the other entries to this AllSpark assembly, I would definitely say go watch those too. Well, that's about it for now. Uh, I do have other stuff to upload, so this shouldn't be a one-off and then a return to my usual multiple-month-long hiatus. So, bye.